Thank you so much for um, joining us this morning to learn a little bit more about Checkbook. I am Nicole Boone. I am the program manager on Checkbook. Ed Sokolowski is with us as well. He is the director of application development here at the controller's office. And with that, um, let's go take a little tour of Checkbook. So um, when we come to the checkbook site, you will automatically be taken to the spending application. You can tell you're in spending because the box is lit up blue and the arrow is pointing down. Um, this spending is in reference to fiscal year 23. If you look up here, you can see there is a date filter. Um, a fiscal year for the city is from July 1st of the prior year through June 30th of the present year. So automatically you're brought to the current fiscal year in the spending app. As we come down on our screen, you get taken to a bunch of different visualizations. We first get a year by year view of spending from the prior fiscal year to the present fiscal year. By hovering over the bars, you can see the information. We also have the top 10 agencies by disbursement top 10 contracts by disbursement amount. And then we have our top 10 prime vendors by disbursement amount. You can click on the grid view in order to see the background information and you can export that data if you would like to. So let's move on down. So this top dashboard shows what domain you're in, what app, and the lower dashboard breaks that out. So out of our total spending, which is 79 billion for this year, we have payroll spending, capital spending, contract spending, trust and agency spending and other spending. If I were to click on any one of these other apps, it would actually refresh the entire screen just to show that type of spending. But for now, we're just gonna look at overall spending for the city. So, after we look at that, we come down to our widgets where we will show you the top five checks written in the city by spent amount, top five agencies by spending, top five expense categories, top five prime vendors, top contracts by spending, MOX registered COVID contract spending, and payroll spending. I'm just gonna come back up our screen. So each of these widgets has a little plus or details. If I click the plus, I'm gonna go from our top five to our top 150 results. Sorry, it gets a while to get down there. And then if I click on the details link, I'm gonna be taken to a narrow down faceted page. Just gonna let that load. With our narrow down page, so say if I'm not interested in all city spending, maybe I just wanna see Department of Education. I can just click on Department of, Age of, of Education and I'm narrowing down my results to just those results. And maybe I just wanna see Department of Education, what contract, sorry, what, ven what vendor is working with the Department of Education? I wanna see Staples. So I'm just gonna narrow down my results to be Staples, Department of Education, the load is, I'm going to let the page load so that we could see the result. It's just going to take a moment. There we go. And then I can either just view my results here. I can further narrow down by all of these different categories, or I can export my results into an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So there are results and you can print them out. Something I wanna point out, something that's new in the spending app is that for each spending transaction in the city, we are also showing the um, budget code. So we're bringing over budget code information. It's this last column. And that's a, a very new aspect of checkbook. So let me click out of this and go back to our spending app. I'm gonna come back to home. So another thing about the data in Checkbook is it's layered in three tiers. So the first tier is citywide, where we can see all of the spending for the city. But I may not want to see all of the spending for the city. Maybe I just want to see the spending for the Department of Education. 
So if I were to come down here to the top five agencies and click Department of Education, my page will refresh and the top dashboard changes. We've gone from 79 billion down to 23.5 billion, which is the spending for just the Department of Education. The lower dash, all of our visualizations change. The lower dashboard changes just to reflect the Department of Education, as do all of our widgets. Um, and let's say I don't want to see department. So, so that's the agency level. Say I want to go down to the vendor level. I can also come down here and let's look at our top our top five prime vendors. Uh, I'm going to choose, actually, I'm going to choose the New York School Bus Umbrella Services. If I click on that link, again, now we're just seeing bus services for the Department of Education. The entire screen has changed. The spending has gone down to 143.8 million. My graph visualizations have changed. My lower dashboard shows just expense spending. And I have all of the same widgets as pertaining to that vendor. So we have the citywide, then we have the agency level, and then we have the vendor level information. Um, there is more than one way to get at that agency information. Say I come into the app at the citywide level and I already know that I am going to want to see the office of the controller. I just come up here to the upper left hand side of the screen and click on citywide agencies. And then I scroll through until I find office of the controller, click on it, the entire page refreshes for that agency. Do we have any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Good. Okay. So I'm just going to bring this back to home and I'm going to show you the feature dashboard. So over here, we have our MWBE and our sub vendor feature dashboard. When we are in the spending app, it reads the spending feature dashboard. These are subsets of the overall spending amount for the city that are going to either our minority um, vendors or going to sub vendors. So out of the 79 billion in overall spending, 1.9 billion of that is going to MWBEs. And then out of and then out of the overall spending, 376.7 million right now is going to sub vendors. If I click on the MWB box, notice the dashboard lights up. The sub vendor dashboard is now only going to show MWBE sub vendors. The entire screen has refreshed to show you all citywide MWBEs. Um, we have our graph, graph visualizations showing the MWBE share, showing total spending going to sub vendors year after year. You can see we're trending up in our percentage. Um, this is which share of each of the minority groups is getting what. If I click on this down here, I can change the graph to just show whichever minority groups I am interested in. Then we have our top 10 agencies by MWBE spending. Hovering over the graph visualization shows you your information. Top 10 prime vendors by MWBE spending. Top 10 contracts by MWBE spending. And then we have our top 10 sub vendors by MWBE spending. If I wanted to just focus on one MWBE group, I could come up to this little triangle at the top. I could choose Asian and my entire screen will refresh to only show data for Asian Americans. For now, we're going to do all MWBEs. There we go. Okay, so let's come down to our widgets. We have the same widgets. We have our top five checks going to MWB vendors, top five agencies and their percentage of MWBE spend, top five expense categories and the percentage of MWBE spend, Top five prime vendors, and you can see their MWB category and the percentage of spend that is going to that vendor. Top five sub vendors, you have their category, their percentage of spend, and how many subcontracts they currently hold with the city. Top five contracts by MWBE vendors, 
And then spending by industry and the percentage that is going to each industry by MWBE spend. I'm going to scroll back up to the top. And I'm just going to click over here in the sub vendor dashboard. So now the page is refreshing and all of the information will be regarding MWBE sub vendors, their share. Again, we've got our same widgets and our agency widget. This is nice. You can see exactly how many sub vendors are being hired by each agency and the percentage paid to sub vendors. We can see our top five sub vendors and the number of contracts they have and their MWB category, our top five prime vendors, MWBE, and our top five subcontract. So if I were to do this the opposite way, let me come back to home. I could start at sub vendors. And if I click on sub vendors, now you're not just getting your MWB sub vendors, you're getting all sub vendors across the city. And if you notice your MWB box is just now reflecting the MWB sub vendors. Does that make sense? So those boxes work together with both the spending and contracts domains in order to see what the subsets of those portions are. Okay, let's, uh, yeah. Nicole, Nicole, we have a couple of questions, so let's just stop here for a Absolutely. second. Absolutely. All right, so the first question I see here is, is the checkbook NYC dashboard built using an industry BI tool such as Tableau or BI? No, it is not. This is uh, these are this is a custom code application that was written. Uh, we don't use those tools for this. And the second question is, how is March twenty three total spending calculated? Is it is it is that to date as of three fourteen or an estimate for the month? All right. So these are actual spending transactions that come to us from uh, from FMS, the financial management system. And we are we are a day and a half behind, so it says it's up to date to within a day and a half. We get updates every night. Uh, is okay. A couple more questions. Okay, hi. Uh, who are the main users of this dashboard, and how are they trained, if applicable? Nicole, you want to take that one? Who are the main users? Yeah. Who's our main audience? Um, well, it's the general public. It is uh, members of other agencies. It is um, good government groups. Uh, whoever is interested in um, mining the data. We get school groups that are interested. Um, it's really, it's, just, it's the general public. All right. Is this all using open data? Um, I'm not sure what that means. These with open data, this is... We get about 30 feeds a night from FMS. Uh, we get some from NYCHA, we get, EDC, uh, we get EDC, we get payroll data. All that information comes in every evening and it gets, goes through an a, a extract, translate, and load process. Um, so again, what you're seeing here is the result of the data we get from FMS. And it's all exportable. It's all exportable. Any other questions? Um, how do you have access to FMS? Again, it's nightly interfaces coming in. Right. FMS does. FMS is mainly a batch application that gets updated at night, so um, we get information during the day that comes in. Um, to the okay, to the question about how checkbook is built, it looks like the source code is available in GitHub. Is that correct? The, the version of the source code in GitHub is the old is the old version of the code. So we're going through a major upgrade now. Um, as far as the uh, the software that we use to display the information. So we'll, we should be live sometime in June, and then that, that version of the GitHub, GitHub code will be available for everybody. All right, I think, uh, all right, Nicole, let's, uh, why don't you continue? I'll just, I'll just queue these up for the next round of questions. Okay, great. Um, one more feature before we leave the spending app that I wanted to show us is that it can be when you start navigating through checkbook, um, it, it's easy to get lost. Uh, we have breadcrumbs that make it easier, but one of the built-in aspects are if you're in one domain, um, you'll stay there. So if you're in the spending app, you're gonna stay in the spending app. So if I wanna click on a contract that would deal with the contract app, I would get this pop-out page so I can take a, I can observe the contract without losing my place within checkbook. 
I should let that load. So you will get a pop-out page with all of the information on the contract. We're gonna cover this contract page once we get to the contract side, but I just wanted to show you, and then I can close it and I'm still in the place where I started. So let's explore contracts. I'm gonna click over onto the contract app. We know we're here, it's lit up blue. Uh, this number is this 19.7 billion is in registered contract amount. Uh, for the current fiscal year, we have our graph visual, our year to year graph visualizations of spending by active expense contract. And we've got our top 10 agencies by active expense contract, our top 10 active expense contract, and then our top 10 prime vendor by active expense contract. So just as we did before with the spending, this number at the top is our overall amount of registered contract amount for this year. But as we go down to the bottom, we break those amounts out. So just for clarity, um, an active expense contract is any contract whose period of performance is greater than or equal to today's date. So that's any contract say your contract started last year, say your contract started five years ago, as long as it's still ongoing through today's date, it's an active contract. A registered contract is any contract that is registered within this fiscal year. So it's a subset of the overall active contracts that the city has. Um, so this number at the top, that 20,858, that is the total number of active expense contracts. And that bottom number, the 190.2 billion is the amount of all of those contracts. Likewise, we've got 8,267 registered expense contracts equaling 19.7 billion for this fiscal year. We also have active revenue contracts for our contracts where any money is coming into the city. Um, registered, reven registered revenue contracts pending expense contracts and pending revenue contracts. Pending contracts are only in the system for 30 days. Once they have, so within that 30 days, they either have to be registered or they drop out. So this number is a changing daily sort of number. And once a contract is registered, it drops out of checkbook for up to two days and then shows back up as a registered contract. When it's in a when it's a in a registration state, you will notice that the contract ID instead of saying MA1 or CT1, it'll say MAR or CTR. That indicates that this contract is going through registration process. So let me come back up to our active expense contracts. All right, Nicole, before you start, let me field a couple of questions here. Sure. Is the underlying data accessible via an API or directly through Open Data Portal? Uh, the data itself is available through uh, extract that we have in our system and an API. You can do both. Um, it, this, so we do, not, we, do, we do not put extracts into uh, Open Data. You would have to come to Checkbook using either the API or uh, the, uh, what's the other search we do? We can do advanced search, we can do data feeds, which we will data go feeds. over. Yeah, data feeds will give you all the data that you want. Um, the other question is, uh, how much of the data shows expenditures not budgeted in advance? How can I basically find emergency uh, disbursement? So we'll, again, we'll show you that as Nicole can show you how you can look, look up an emergency contract. Sure. And then what are some of the impactful ways this data has been used? Um, they, um, Nicole, you've been really much closer to some of these recently on how the data has been used. Um, so it's been used and it's used by um, different agencies to evaluate uh, how, how often, how frequently, or like how fast a registration process is taking place or how long um, an average type of pending contract is pending. It has been used, um, it's been used in so many different ways. I'm just trying to think of really valuable ones that we've done. Like we've tracked down the spending on very specific programs uh, that people are interested. It's been um, used for 
journalist art, journalism articles. Um, it's been used uh, by good government groups to write reports. It's really used across the board in many different ways. It's been used by MWBEs to try to find which agencies are hiring, what kind of, you know, what kind of uh, contracts they're, they're taking, which MWBs they're hiring, that sort of thing. All right, two more, Nicole, then get back. Is is the data dictionary include? Where can I find it? The, the data feeds have has the data contains the data dictionaries. Yeah. Um, is there a visualization of taxes by type of tax business, personal income, sales tax? No, there are no visualizations for that. How far does data go back? It goes back to uh, January 2010. 1st, 2010. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, Nicole. Okay. Um, okay, so let come on down. So within our our widgets for contracts, we've got our top five master agreements. Master agreements are any contracts that are their parent contracts to child contracts. We have two different types of master contracts. We have our MMA ones, and then we have MA1 contracts. Uh, MMA ones are the parent contracts to CTA1 contracts. MA ones are the parent contracts to DO1 contracts. Um, then we have our top five master agreement modifications, top five contracts. These are independent contracts, or CT ones as they are known. Then we've got our top five contract modifications. The modification widget is a really neat widget because it shows where a contract started and now where they are after some time. So this might be an indication of a contract that's just sort of getting out of control in spending, or it just might indicate a contract that's been around a really long time. For instance, uh, some of like the bus company ones they, instead of um, ending the contract, they just kept renewing the contract. So therefore you've started at 1 billion as an original amount. And now we're up to 7 billion because over time that contract as it got renewed had money added to it over the years. But the modifications is a great way just to sort of at a glance, like when, for instance, an example we'll use is city time. City time blew up in spending, but if you could have just glanced at a, you know, and been like, hmm, that looks strange. Maybe I'll take a deeper look. This is where you would want to take that look. Then we have our MOX registered COVID-19 contracts, top five prime vendors, and our top five award methods, top five agencies, contracts by industry, and contracts by size. Again, just like the spending side, all of the widgets behave the same way. So if I hit the plus sign, I'm going to get the top 150. I've hit details. I'm going to be taken to a narrow down faceted search where I can narrow down my search and export it if I would like to do that. So I'm just going to show us that. Sorry, it's filtering through a lot of data. So it takes a little bit of time to get these pages to load. So. From here, I can narrow down by vendor, by sub-vendor status, by prime vendor amount, by contract ID, et cetera. And then I can just come over here and export my results into an Excel file. Now I'm just going to bring us back to the citywide level. Um, just like spending, we have the citywide level of things, then we can go down to the agency level on contracts, and then we can go down even further to the vendor level. Um, we have our contracts feature dashboard. If I click on the MWB dashboard, my screen is going to refresh just to show MWBEs. My sub-vendor dashboard switched to just MWBEs. And all of my widgets now are going to reflect MWBE vendors. Um, within this, we can see whether the contract includes sub vendors. We can see what the MWB category of our prime vendors is, how many contracts that they have. We can see who our sub vendors are, how many contracts they hold with, within the city, our top five award methods, our top agencies, we can see the number of contracts, our contracts by industry, 
and contracts by size. Again, if I come up here, I can switch over to the sub vendor side, my visualizations, update, just waiting for this page to refresh. And now I can view all information simply dealing with sub vendors if sub vendors is all I want to look at. Now, I am, if I want to see more in depth information on an individual contract, I'm just going to click on the contract. My page is going to refresh with a contract ID page. I'll just give that a second. So we have our contract ID, we have the current amount of the contract, the original amount, and what was spent already. We have all of the general information about the prime, the purpose on the contract, how many solicitations, when the contract started, when it ended, when it was registered. You can see who the contracting agency is, the number of versions this contract has been through, and we can also see what the sub vendor information is. So we have 11 sub vendors and they've been, they've had 6.24 million spent to date thus far. If I scroll down, I can look at the contract history by the prime vendor. I can look through all 41 versions. Now a version means something changed on the contract. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a monetary change. So you'll notice that all of the current amounts and the original amounts match. The current amount and the original amount are the same to this date. So no monetary changes have taken place to this contract over the years. But some contract detail had changed because there have been this many different versions. That's what that tells me. And then um, I can look at each spending transaction for this contract through each fiscal year. And I can also look at the spending by sub vendors. So these um, come as, sorry, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, so there was a question about looking at the uh, the prime vendor, how they got paid. So this would be one way of looking at the data. So you, if you know the contract number, you can bring up the contract number and find the payments that have vendor, which Nicole showed you higher up. And then these, she's shown you the payments that were entered in by the prime vendor into PIP for all the sub vendors. So PIP is the payment information portal and prime vendors go in there to put in their sub vendor information. So as with anything, the information is only as good as it's, it's as it's being reported. So it, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's underreported. If you click on these accordion buttons, then you can see more detailed information for that vendor. So I can I go did. down. Sorry. All right. So we had another question here. So a question that bounced around about why did we start recording checkbook at uh, 2010? Um, there was a major upgrade to FMS. It went from FMS 2 to 3. And prior to 2010, the formats of all the interfaces were different. So a decision was made at that point in time just to capture the new the data that exists in a new version of, uh, of uh, FMS. Um, okay. okay, Nicole. Okay. So that's the contract ID page. So we're having some questions now about finding information. So now I'm gonna uh, focus the conversation on the three different types of search methods. And we are doing a more in-depth um, drill down on these. So we're just gonna do an overview today. And tomorrow it, uh, we're doing more of a drill down on each of these search methods. So if you're interested in this, I would suggest also joining us tomorrow. Um, so first we have our smart search. I use smart search basically when I don't have a lot of information, maybe I just have a vendor name. Um, so I'm going to start typing in a vendor name there, and I'm going to choose the vendor name that I am looking for. So smart search is the only place you're going to come to in checkbook. And you're going to be able to see like, okay, this is their spending data, this is their contract data, and choose at this level, that's what I wanna see. Um, you could see it all and export it into a file, or you could do each. So I can do my spending data and then export into a file, or I could do my contract data and export it into a file. And so this can be very useful if you're just trying to look at the summary of each of their spending transactions, 
um, for analysis. I tend to use advanced search quite a bit more because I tend to have a certain amount of information um, about what I'm looking for. So um, say I wanna see all of the spending for the office of the controller. I can just come down here, I can choose office of the controller. Um, maybe I wanted to see, you may wanna see total spending. Maybe you just wanna see capital contracts. Maybe you just wanna see contract spending. You can choose. Um, you can choose what industry group you wanna look at. You could choose if you just wanna see data for a particular MWBE group. We have this new um, drop down for catastrophic event. Maybe you just want to see spending about COVID. As there are more, or hopefully not any more catastrophic events, we will add to this tab. Um, but for now, all we have is COVID. So I'm going to choose fiscal year 23, and then I'm going to submit. I could also have chosen an issue date if I knew, like, oh, I want to see a particular check between a, a time period. We could do that. Right now, we're just gonna choose all spending for fiscal year 23, submit. At this point, I still have a choice to narrow down the um, amount of information. It's only 2000 records. I'm gonna export it into a CSV file, download and export it. Now, there are limitations to advanced search. You can only download up to 200,000 records. So, and that'll take us into our next search, but just for now, just know that we can't download more than 200,000 records from advanced search. Now, uh, we had a question about finding emergency contracts. So I'm gonna come back to my advanced search. I don't know why this is, I'm just gonna clear my cache and there we go. So you can see there are tabs for each of the domains. I'm just gonna come down to contracts. And then, so you have a choice between active contracts, registered contracts, and pending. Remember, active is all the contracts that are registered, that are currently active within the city. Registered are the ones that are registered within this fiscal year, and the pending are those that are still waiting for registration. You can choose an MWB category. You can choose a contract type. Here is where I would search for, um, not where I would search for emergency. Hold on. Here we go. At a word method, I'm going to choose emergency. And then I don't know what we're looking for in emergency contract. So I'm just going to go with all years and submit. Um, being that we're looking at all years, it's going to take a little longer to cache than most. Um, and something I want to draw your attention to while the, um, the data loads Whenever you do an all year search, an advanced search, your top navigation is going to reveal results for all years. So when you see 1.3 trillion, that is citywide spending for all years is 1.3 trillion. We've had some questions about that. So I just want to clarify that is not this year's spending. And so once I have my results for emergency contracts, I can. There's 4,900, so that's an exportable amount. I'll export them into a CS CSV file and print it out. Um, okay, so then the, the, the next way you can search for something, say you know your search is going to be far over 200,000 results. That's when we can come up to data feeds. I can choose what kind of format I would like to see my results in. I'm going to choose Excel and click Next. I'm going to ask for citywide spending for 2023. My guess is that's going to be a really big file. Um, and down here, sorry, I did that really quickly. You can choose exactly which columns you would like to see come up in your Excel spreadsheet. I'm just going to choose them all and click submit. So it's over it's almost 2 million rows of transactions. So checkbook is gonna need to do this process behind the scenes. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna put my email into the email down here and hit confirm. I will then receive an email, which will have a tracking number in it when my, when my files are ready. I'm gonna put that tracking number right in here and hit go and checkbook will deliver the files. 
So if you have something larger, data feeds is definitely the way to go. And as somebody was asking about APIs, you can come over to the API section. We can click on one of the domains and it will give you all of your parameters to set up your API for the spending domain. Okay, so coming back to home. Um, something else I wanna make sure that I show you is our create alerts. Um, so very much like advanced search, create alerts looks like advanced search, but if I know that there is information that I am gonna wanna see on a regular basis, um, for instance, maybe I wanna see pending contracts as they come in. I'm gonna come up here to pending. Since pe Was there a question? Okay, I'm gonna come up here to pending. I'm going to hit next. It's gonna show me all of the pending contract transactions. Great, I'm gonna hit next. And then I'm just gonna, so for my own edification, I'm gonna call it pending contracts. I'm gonna add my email. Um, maybe I only, I, minimum additional results is one. I only, like, only want to see a alert if there's one new pending contract. And I would like to know this daily. And I'm going to set my expiration date for the 31st. I schedule my alert. And now each day, whenever a new pending contract comes into checkbook without me having to go out and look for it, I get an email from uh, alert saying, hey, you have a new pending contract. Questions? I have some here. Um, see where I left off here. Okay, answer the question about where you find prime spending for a vendor, because you also can find subcontracted data. Um, open, when it was established, um, there's a question about funding by program like TNT, ANF, and homeless programs. It's simple. There's another one out asking about how do I research budgeting and funding for public libraries. Um, we have something here on uh, how quickly do contracts get added and are there ever any exempts from being listed on checkbook? Okay. There are certain, there are, there are a couple of agencies where um, the uh, DOI contracts and some of the, uh, uh, was it the, uh, Public, it's the the DA offices in the various boroughs, their information is considered private and it's not put out there. It just shows you in a privacy, it just shows you there's a spending amount, but you don't see the contract and you won't see the vendors. Um, when it comes to questions about COVID and uh, asylum seekers, those people, the problem is that you know, there was really no budget for it. So from what Nicole and I have been over the years working with this, we, there's budget codes that may be set up for a particular, uh, for a particular, say, COVID, but then they link those budget codes to existing contracts. So it's very hard to just say, give me all the COVID spending that the city, um, all the contract information and all the spending for COVID. You have to really, you have to, you have to search for it. You have to look at the budget codes. You have to look at the contract purposes. purpose fields, yeah, purpose fields. So there's no straight answer to how do I get the data. So that's where Nicole is going to do a little more investigative. Uh, like we, we kind of look like forensics here. We try to go find out where this data is. So that's going to be the topic for tomorrow's um, checkbook to kind of give you some ideas on how you can search. And sometimes, honestly, you can't find the data. I mean, it, it's it's if it's not. If it, the data is only as good as the people using the budget codes and information into the system. So it's there somewhere, but you no, know, sometimes you just can't get, you cannot find it. Correct. It, it, and, and we will go over individual, um, please bring your individual searches, things you're looking for to tomorrow's session, because that's really going to be geared towards how do we find those? And we're going to take your examples and just try to search for them. Like whether, you know, and see what we can find. So that's really, um, today was just more, is more of an overview of all of the different things that Checkbook can do and how to look for stuff. Uh, tomorrow we'll deep dive. Um, a couple of other things I want to show you. We have this new feature session when it, it is lit up blue. That means that we have some pretty recent new features. So this is a way to keep up with what's going on in Checkbook and, and has 
have there been any new things that can help you with your searches? Um, we also have this help section. There's a site navigation and glossary for each of the domains. So if there's any, any terms that you're unfamiliar with, any, it, it's a great resource for that. Um, we also have instructional videos to help you remember how to navigate through the different domains. Um, they're just really simple tools, but in case you forget anything that we've gone over today, this is a great way to just go back and refresh your memory. I am also um, available for questions, especially if you're having a detailed search and you're having a tough time, I will help people um, sort of drill down on their search. And we have, uh, a oh, sorry. One more question here. You mentioned that pending contracts change over time. Does checkbook allow for a point in time analysis? What was pending on March 1st versus the 14th? No, we do not. No. Um, once a contract is, uh, we don't store a daily what the uh, what pending contracts would look like. Every day, the the current list of pending contracts is deleted, and our our Oasis application that that uh, does the contract registration send us a new sends us a new list uh, of pending contracts, and we post that overnight. So that's that's almost that's like almost real time. Where the that's why you. When Nicole was talking about it drops off a pending and it shows up as registered, that's that delay because our, our pending file is real time, whereas the information from FMS that goes through our cycle processing is uh, takes a little bit longer to do. So unfortunately, no, I can't. I can't. Only thing you can do is you can download all the pending contracts yourself. I mean, if that's critical for you guys, download it on the first and download it on the fourteenth, and you can compare it if something like if that's a need. Or you can set an alert and find out every time there's a new one and add it to your sheet as well. Like it's that you can do that also. Yeah. Um, if there's, I mean, to our knowledge, the data the data feed does work. There's a question about data feed. Sometimes uh, the information is not sent out email. Um, again, reach out to us and yes. we can check it. Um, it should it, less. Than, we've been using it. Works fine. But you now, if there's something that you see, please let us know. Did I did I answer everybody's questions other than some of the some of the the, the searches because I think we want to cover that tomorrow. Any other questions, guys? Okay, looks Thank good. Thank you guys this, so much for joining us. We really thank you. Hopefully, this was helpful to you guys. Thank you.